hey, welcome back to Tavern Take 5. I am Gayla, a.k.a. the Awkward Introverted Therapist, and I have somebody special with me like, oh, I think a few weeks ago. But this time, we are going to talk about nutrition, fitness, those types of things. So let me start by welcoming Winter Ross. Thank you, Gayla, for having me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. So actually, I mean, for people who, well, nobody knows yet, but you will start doing some contracting with, well, you're starting to do some uh, contracting with Tavern Health and Wellness. So yes. people will be able to work directly with you for uh, nutrition, diet, uh, uh, diet guidance, uh, food, mood, all of those different things. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes. So I'm looking excited. And I'm, I'm very excited for that. So yes, like you said, um, I've started with Tavern Health, contracted out, and I will be able to provide all sorts of nutrition education, uh, nutrition counseling on a various amount of subjects, um, you know, mental health and the body, weight loss, um, healthy weight gain. Um, any type of nutrient deficiencies, we can go over labs together. I can interpret labs, request labs for you to see, you know, what's going on with your body, gut health, all that great stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So I'm pretty sure people are going to wonder what are your credentials because it's going to be on the website, but yeah. let's just kind of talk about it because in my first, my very first intro video, I, I said, because I have some certifications around nutrition, we can talk about certain things, but I was like, I am not a registered dietitian, so <laughs> that would be outsourced. So yes. let the people know what your credentials are. Yes, so I'm a registered dietitian. I went to school at Kaiser University. I made, I obtained my bachelor's in science in dietetics and nutrition. Um, I did a very long extensive internship. <laughs> And then I sat for my uh, national board, uh, which is accredited through CDR. And so now I am a registered dietitian through CDR, meaning that I'm nationally accredited. I can work anywhere in the United States, um, and as well as I'm also um, state licensed within the state of Florida. Um, and currently, I can also work with the state of Texas. Um, I will be getting licensed in a few other states because even though I have my national certification, that's what they require, still state licenses. So I'm in the process of doing that for Missouri and Illinois. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So let's talk a little bit about nutrition and food. So okay. one of the things that kind of makes me cringe when I'm talking to people and it's not me telling them you know, eat this or maybe think about this or go vegan like me, not mm -hmm. that. But <laughs> when we talk about the foods and the way they're made now, and I get that, well, I've eaten this all my life or my parents have eaten this all their life. And I'm like, actually, no, if you look at the ingredients and if you are able to go back and look at ingredients from back then, yes. you, they would see it's a difference. So what are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on that are, yes, food is made differently nowadays. You have to think about the GMOs, um, the processing that food now go through, which is different than maybe the process that we went through many, many years ago, where it was a much simpler um, application and process. Um, pesticides, um, having different type of antibiotics injected into our food, because, you know, we do seem to produce food a lot faster, like let's say beef, for instance, cows. You know, they were farm raised. Yes, there's still farm raised animals out there, such as beef and chicken. I think it's like wild fed chickens and stuff like that. But to be able to keep up with the production, to have them get, you know, stockier and heavier, faster, to be able to go ahead and put them out to the public, you have to feed it a little bit differently than you would do a grass fed, you know, animal. Grass fed mm -hmm. animals. If you go in the meat market and you look up actually like free range um, chicken eggs or grass fed cows or that type of meat and stuff like that, you will see that it's way more expensive, <laughs> tremendously more expensive than, you know, just maybe a regular type of beef, I would say, or cow. The ones that are were more meal and more grain and more wheat and stuff like that to make them um, stockier. And you really are what you eat. So if that animal isn't healthy or if that animal was filled with a lot of um, fillers to get it to be bigger, so to put on production, you're filling yourself with those fillers. No doubt about Ooh. it. So saying that, then 
somebody who eats chicken that is, so they they don't get organic or um, natural uh, no hormones injected what would you think um, typically and this is not just a a blanket statement everybody is going to look like this but what would you say a person who ate those types of meat that has have the antibiotics and all of those things injected in them what do you think they would look like whether it's male or female I think, you know, especially nowadays with a lot of the different gut health issues that we see in people like Crohn's disease or even um, the IBS or different things like that, I think it kind of manifests itself in those type of, of realms, you know, especially when you said I've eaten this all my life. So maybe when you were younger and your parents were buying food for you and preparing meals for you, maybe they were going straight to the butcher. I had a friend who lived in a whole nother country where, um, you know, they didn't have like Walmarts and Publix. They had to go to the butcher. They had to get their food from the butcher, fresh cut, everything like that compared to now coming into the States. It might show up in the, the sense of um, acne feeling sluggish, feeling, you know, deprived of certain nutrients and things like that. So I definitely do think you, you see a difference in yourself. You might experience different symptoms that you don't know where they came from, but I do believe our food has something to do with that. Hmm. Okay. Well, me being on the mental health side, <laughs> of course I'm going to ask the question, mm -hmm. how does the food affect your mood and other uh, mental health in general. Mm -hmm. See, so this is why I'm so glad to partner with you because mental health is a big thing to me, um, especially previously practicing in the mental health field for nutrition with the um, VA. So yes, it does play a very important factor. Sugar, oh my gosh, that plays a big factor in your mood and how you feel as far as your mental health. And then high fructose corn syrup on top of all the, the sugar intake that we have nowadays. And then just being um, deficient in certain nutrients like vitamin D. I know from personal experience, vitamin, not having a deficiency in vitamin D, it totally changes your mood, making you, you know, uh, anywhere from depressed to sluggish to, you know, having zero amount of energy. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's a big part, definitely. Okay, all right. So sugar, how mm -hmm. does that, what does that look like in a person in general uh, when it comes to mental health? So sugar, I would say it allows you to be a lot more sluggish, um, feel a lot more um, down altogether, sluggish, down, depressed. Um, I think it kind of has an effect on our focusing capabilities, mm -hmm. like just everyday function as far as working, things like that, how we can um, function and focus throughout the day to get done what we need to get done. Because even though, you know, sugar, sometimes people think can be your best friend, especially with these fancy Starbucks coffees and things like that, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. does cause a crash. And when you have that crash, it's like none other, right? But then we go back to it again <laughs> the next day or we fill up on it later on. So yes, I definitely think it allow it, it has an effect on depression. It has an effect on um, being sluggish and how you move and how you see yourself overall mm -hmm. okay what foods or uh ingredients would you say affect anxiety or or play a part in anxiety or could play a part in anxiety caffeine <laughs> i know caffeine <laughs> plays a huge part in anxiety um from the mental aspect and how it manifests itself in a physical aspect with you like the um, heart palpitations um mm -hmm. anywhere from sweating anywhere from being super jittery and things like that same thing with sugar um being super jittery anxious um feeling excited um and things like that um, and I would say more so like your bad sugars, because caffeine in moderation, it can be a definitely a good thing and helpful, especially if you're drinking it pure. I know it doesn't taste the best that way, but pure without a lot of additives as far as sugar, maybe mm -hmm. some honey. Um, but naturally, so no cream or sugar. Right, right. No cream too. I used to be that person who was trying to say, well, I'm not drinking sugar, so I'm going to just substitute it with my cream because it's sweet enough. Mm -hmm. 
that's still wrong. <laughs> you know, but when it comes to like healthier sweets and things like that, you can see how you don't get that spike in elevation and then that drop. You know, it is more like a natural rise and a natural flow into balance for you as far as um your body is concerned. But yeah, definitely heart palpitations, the jitteriness, sometimes even heavy sweating, you know what I mean? And it's still again not being able to focus as much. So yeah. And overall with um food that food mood connection are those the only things that you would see in a person so anxiety and depression are there other mental health issues so other mental health issues such as bipolar disorder um schizophrenia um even ptsd yeah really yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tell me more so even with those type of foods, so uh, let me kind of go into like a different element as well. When people are dealing with different type of diseases, um, especially mental health diseases, they seem to kind of like have suppression of their uh, food intake, you know, mm-hmm. and when they come get, you know, more in a, what do we call it? Kind of like your baseline. When you go back to your baseline, you're taking your medication, you're getting, and you're feeling good. Let me tell you something. That appetite comes back with a vengeance. <laughs> and so from that ramification, what I would see is that my patients would be hungry all the time. And so then that's when you need to start making sure that you're um, educated on the healthy uh, food decisions that you should make as far as what you're intaking. Um, because, you know, it's new to you, like even with smoking or uh, alcoholism and stuff like that. We all know that's a natural suppressing of the appetite as well. And so when you start eating again, it's a big factor to make sure that the food that you're intaking is going to be healthy items to satisfy your needs and to make sure you have a well-balanced diet that you're not going to be putting on all this weight. And another aspect of that is when I see like a lot of patients who are taking medications regarding schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and things of that nature, um, the medication can cause a lot of weight gain in that process. And so then that's why I tell my patients, you know, you have to look at, okay, you know your body, if the medication is working for you, what and but it's allowing you to gain weight, what can we do to combat that to help you keep off the pounds and keep you at a healthy weight as well, you know? So, mm-hmm. yeah. so that's more of aspects that I, I see that. But yeah, definitely, I think the food and um, mood correspondence in regards to bipolar, um, schizophrenia, you see a lot of deficiencies um, in them because of the suppressing mm-hmm. of not eating so much food anymore. Okay. So you have yeah. So then you have to really um, see like the vitamin D levels are low or maybe B12 or B1 or B6 is low. So, yeah. Or the iron deficiency or they have different anemias because a lot of people think of just iron anemias, but you have megaloblastic anemia from your B vitamins and things of that nature. So or your folic acid may be deficient as well. So. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And so Ooh. when you start in taking those nutrients as well as, you know, if you're taking medication, as well as if you're doing therapy, you will start mm-hmm. seeing yourself feel a lot better. Cause you know, it's always several different pillars that work with your mental health. Medication mm-hmm. can't cure everything. Therapy can't cure everything. You know, you have oh. your different pillars. So mm-hmm. when all those pillars are coming together and you're working on all of them and you're doing great, then it's like, maybe the missing link was nutrition. Like, Hey, you know, I've been taking my medicine. I've been doing my therapy. I've been exercising. I've been, mm-hmm. um, you know, doing all my different, um, what do they call it? Like your um your your outlets to kind of make sure that you're in a good mood and you're feeling good, but it's still like something missing. You add that nutrition component. Oh, you know, I didn't know. Like I was low on folic acid. It was something physically wrong with me, or oh, I was low on iron or low on my vitamin vitamin Bs. So I needed that stuff, you know. Gotcha. So that goes to the or, or speaks to what I believe or what I focus on or like what I like to remind people and that's that holistic piece Mm -hmm. everything has to work together in order for you to be that well that 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 good feeling well human being if you will Mm -hmm. yeah yes you know food was not just created because it tastes great yeah of course it has to taste great because we um need to consume it right that's a better way for us to consume it however it really has a purpose (laughs) for our bodies to function it really does yes speaking of food so you -hmm. know the america you know we are 
I, I forgot what our percentage rate is with regard to being overweight or obese, but compared mm -hmm. to some other countries, you know, we, well, we're up there. Um, oh, yeah. And if you talk to people, the thing of it is, nope, I'm not going to be a vegan, vegetarian. I need my meat. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to a person? Because when, for some people, when they hear registered dietitian or nutritionist, they, their mind goes to, oh, you, you want me to give up meat and I can't do that. Right. Right. So that's a no for me because I'm a carnivore. I eat, <laughs> I eat meat <laughs> and I enjoy it thoroughly. So what I say to that is, you know, no one's the same. That's why um, registered dietitians are able to come in and adapt and help you um, create a meal plan or a, a way of life because, you know, eating is a nutritional lifestyle change. So create a healthy lifestyle change that benefits you the most. I would never take something away from you that you love. Um, I always say try to eat it if it's not healthy in moderation as much as you can. But no, we need to make small lifestyle changes to overall encompass, a, you know, a overall healthy lifestyle change altogether. So when it comes to me, I would tell people, OK, we just focus on leaner cuts, um, even with chicken, the way we cook the chicken. So instead of frying it, baking it, you, if you have to have it a little crispy, maybe use the air fryer. Um, the healthiest way for, I think, to eat chicken is taking the skin off because the skin has most of the saturated fat in the chicken. So doing, mm -hmm, doing things like that will help you be able to enjoy your chicken, but still eat it in a healthy manner. Same thing with beef. I like beef as well. I try to eat it in moderations and I get the leaner cut beef. I know the marbling and the fat gives it the flavor and the juice, but you know, that's what marinating is for, <laughs> you know, let it marinate for a day or two and some good juices and sauces and stuff like that. And it'll taste just as great. So yeah, we always can um, come to a compromise when it comes to nutrition because meat does have added value in your diet because I will say this, when you do have a vegan diet, you do miss out on a lot of your um, B vitamins because mostly that's found in red meat. However, you can always supplement it in a different manner if you choose to be vegan or vegetarian, of course. But that is the benefit of um, being a carnivore and liking meat in your diet. You will be getting those nutrients as well. So, so it's just easier if you're a carnivore or omnivore yes. or what have you. You're able to get it easily versus yes. being a, a vegan vegetarian. You just have to be more creative. And sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge but you can yeah. definitely still get it. You can still get it. And I will say it is a lot tougher to get it when you are vegan, like you said. So sometimes supplementation comes into place. Um, I don't know what everybody believes is as far as taking different nutritional supplements, but that is an option to help make sure you get your daily values on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I, absolutely. I take my multivitamin. Yes. Um, for a while there, I was taking a, a B complex and a, a, yes. a vitamin B. And See, you they got came it. back with them. Yeah, but they came back with the labs. They were like, um, you got too much B going on. It's like, oh, well, maybe it's the, maybe it's the multi that I'm taking. So, okay, I dial that one down. But yeah, I'm okay. still taking my multi and my D just to make sure. Because, yes. Yeah, I definitely feel that, that sluggishness sometimes. And I don't even think about it. It's like, oh, I. I missed a couple of days of taking my supplement. And so, yes, yeah, I it's get that funny like, it's very important, especially like with the D, because first of all, if you live in a state that's very cloudy or very high buildings, you're blocking the sun. It's very hard to get D. You get it from like fish skin, you get it fortified in milk and you get it from the sun. It's not really a lot of places to get vitamin D. And if you have a lot of melanocytes and you have a darker complexion, that naturally blocks out the vitamin D nutrients as well. So it makes it harder for people with larger melanocytes to receive vitamin D on top of that. So if you're battling all of that, then definitely a supplement. Oh, so fair, fair complected versus darker complected. Mm -hmm. with, yeah, that's a big difference as well. So uh, a fair complected person is able to kind of absorb that easier. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, fair complexion um, people still have their um, issues with having enough vitamin D intake and things like that. But yes, if you're always like, let's say you're a remote worker, so you don't have to go out the house as much. Let's say, like I said, you live in... <laughs> <laughs> you live in a city very cloudy, tall buildings, always blocking the sun and things like that. Then, yes, 
you're going to have an issue. And then, like I said, with the melanocytes, yeah, it, it really does divert you being able to absorb that nutrient. Think about people in Alaska with the six months, what is dark for six months? I'm sure it's a lot of vitamin D deficiencies there. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. That Those are all the questions I have right now. But mm -hmm. I mean, this is not going to stop. We will continue. And actually, Winter will be doing some of our own stuff as well. So I will wrap it with saying, what is it that you want people to know as we close? Okay, so what I would like everyone to know is that nutrition does not have to be like sad and boring and awful. <laughs> I want everyone to know that nutrition is a fun topic. If you're a foodie like me, it's a plethora of things that you can do to have nutrients and enjoy your food. And if you have any type of health issues going on, let's get in front of it so that, you know, you don't have issues down the line. So. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I am so excited that we are doing this partnership. Thank you all for joining. Once again, I am Gayla, aka the Awkward Introverted Therapist, Winter Ross, Registered Dietitian, Tavern Take 5, out. Mm -hmm.